Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. Today we are starting a brand new series looking at the Casio FX570EX or FX991EX and more commonly known as the Casio ClassWiz. We will be using this to find mean and standard deviation from a group frequency table containing continuous data. So if you own this calculator or you're thinking of getting one, why not subscribe and click the bell to be notified about new uploads showing you how to get the most out of your class with. In this video, we'll be generating basic statistics for a set of data, including mean, median, quartile, standard deviation and variance, and how we can use this functionality to answer typical A-level statistics S1 or IB math exam style questions, just like this one. This question is based on a group frequency table containing the guesses of 40 people on the length of a road. We need to find the mean and standard deviation of these guesses, which is no problem at all for the class whiz. The calculator is a function that will happily generate these statistics and a whole lot more besides with just a few key presses. So let's pull up the class whiz. I'm using an emulated version here so that I can capture the outputs more easily, but it works just the same as the real thing, just a little bit less shiny. To get into stats mode, press the menu button followed by six. We are given a range of choices here and we want the first one, one variable. So press one. Now the default here is one column, allowing you to enter a list of numbers. We, won't, we don't want to type in all 40 numbers individually. So we need to tell the calculator to add a second column for frequency. We can do this easily enough by pressing the shift followed by the setup key, the down arrow, and three for statistics. Press one to turn frequency on, and you can see we now have the right setup for a frequency table. The first column is for our L values, but our table has ranges for these, and the calculator only wants one number. So we're going to use the mid value as estimates for each, which we can find by averaging the upper and lower class boundaries for each group. Now when calculating these, it's important to first consider whether the data is discrete or continuous, and how the values were rounded up or down. Now the values of L represent distance, which is a continuous quantity, and we are told that we've, round, uh, we've rounded it to the nearest kilometer. So the first group, 10 to 12, actually represents all the values of L between 9.5 and 12.5 kilometers. So the average of these is 9.5 plus 12.5 divided by two, which gives us 11. Now notice that in this case, we get the same result as if we'd just added 10 and 12 together. But this is not always the case, and you will need to consider the boundaries carefully whenever dealing with group data. Okay, applying the same thinking to all our other groups, we get estimated values of L for 11, 14, 18, and 25.5, which we can now type into the calculator, along with the frequencies 1, 13, 20 and 6. So the hard work done, all we need to do now is ask the calculator to show us the stats. With the class whiz, we do this by pressing option and then three for one variable calc. It happily churns out lots of values for us. Scrolling down, we can see min, median, quartiles and max values, which will be very handy for other questions. But for this particular one, we need these values at the top of the list. X bar is the mean, so that's the value I'm going to write down over here, 17.65. Then we've got all the various totals down here, including the values for standard deviation. It'd be nice if I could just write down and collect all the marks, but this is A level and we need to show a bit of method. The first value I'm gonna write down is sigma F, the sum of the frequencies. Now on the class whiz, this, this is given by N, the number of elements. So sigma F is equal to 40. Now, sigma fx is given by the one below, sigma x equal to 706. I'll also need sigma fx squared, which is the next one down, 13,050.5. Now, I want to show enough method to make sure I get all of the available marks. So I'm going to sub these three values into the standard deviation formula. So 13,050.5 divided by sigma f, which is 40, minus the square of the mean. So 17.65 squared. No need to type this into my calculator because it's already been done for me. 
The next two values in the list are variance and standard deviation. So we can just write down this one as my answer. 3.84 to three significant figures. Now our value for mean and standard deviation are only going to be estimates as we have used the mid values rather than the actual guesses to calculate with. So let's write that down in a sentence. Taking a quick look at the mark scheme, we get a B1 or independent of method mark for the correct mid values, a method mark and an accuracy mark for finding the mean, an implied method mark for the total, a method mark for the substitution and an accuracy mark for our final answer rounded to an appropriate degree of accuracy. A final B1 mark is for realising that the use of mid values means that these are estimates only. Don't forget to click like or comment below if you found this video useful and if there's sufficient interest I'll create more for you so why not subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.